Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Rift Rivals 2019. We are up to the final match of the night. Griffin versus JD Gaming. And uh, this is the big test for the LPL Raz, and you've already failed once. What? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. It's sad. It's sad, but it's true. And but can JD Gaming beat Griffin? We're talking about failure. We have Griffin, my friends. <laughs> Just going to put that they over there. Okay, okay. So Griffin fails domestically. That's we don't true. know whether they fail internationally yet. That's fair okay? enough. Okay. All right, you got your chance. It's the first time we're going to be seeing, uh, you know, Griffin at an international yeah. event. It's going to be real fun. You technically, you know, JDG. Hasn't been at an international themselves. For them, it's going to be real fun to be able to at least get that experience. And I mean, I know there's at least one player on their team that's pretty good at internationals. Oh, uh, right. he wear, wears one of those world belts, you know? There's a, there's a champion that he's got a skin on uh, You'll for never winning play it. worlds. It's and, never uh, good in the meta. We're not getting Twitch back? He is good. <laughs> Twitch, Yumi, that's a lane, man. You can make that work, no. right? <laughs> you can just stealth into the lane, you know? It's like the double submarine. Oh, except it doesn't have damage early. <laughs> Yeah, but it does late. I mean, but, you don't get a laning phase, okay. but who needs a laning phase? What's really funny is that they threw up the matchup graphic, uh, yeah. you know, just to be able to see, you know, of course, Imp, who's performing incredibly recently, going up against Viper, and of course, the purest. Yeah, this is Taz. Let's see it from Imp first. I'm going to do a summer two months in summer pad, and now I'm not good form, but I'm not good form. All right, kind of like a robot, Tarzan says, well, you guys just didn't do very well, therefore we're better what? than you and we'll probably what? win. What kind of selective memory is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, three. You lost three at the beginning of the split. What yeah, happened they, they recently? They stopped watching. They stopped watching after that. On our blue side, it will be JD Gaming. Zoom, top side of the map, Flawless, Yagao, Imp, and Lumao. You're going to round out that roster. Kanavi is on, uh, on the bench, and of course... He's only on loan from the team they're up against. Watch in out Griffin. for Kanavi. Watch out for Kanavi. That man may be giving strategies. No, I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he giving strategies to? That's the question. That's Who is he a spy for? That's Griffin true. or for JD Gaming? <laughs> I don't know. But JD has been really fun to watch recently surrounding Imp and Lumao as players because this squad, they were the squad that looks topside. Zoom, automatically seen as the t like second best top laner within the league has actually haven't been given the load. It's been Imp and Lumao has been performing fantastically so far. Yeah, and the thing that I really like is the fact that Zoom has been playing scaling champions and winning in team fights. But on the other side of the rift, it is Griffin with Sword, top side of the map. Tarzan in the jungle, Chovy in the mid lane, and Viper in Lahans, that bottom lane to be feared. Summer Split has been all about this bottom lane. Spring was all about Chovy, his gigantic KDA. Yes. Uh, Sword was a bit of a teetering point, but Tarzan was that cerebral jungle that, that took control. This season, it's Viper and Lahens. Yeah, just young, huge talents is what I'm looking at. And whenever I look at Sword, I see someone who's obviously put in a weak side lane situation, usually makes the best out of it. Because he recognizes if you have Chovy, Viper and Tarzan on your team, you're usually going to be getting by. And so I've been really liking Griffin's most recent results. And we're just talking about recency. Well, you can't get better than their recent results. They've won five two zeros in a row. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fun to be able to see what is essentially JDG back to what they were formerly seen as, the finalists in the LPL Spring, versus Griffin, also bridesmaid finalists of the uh, you know, LCK Spring. So. Both of these teams, obviously, Griffin is by far the favorites in this in this matchup. Yes, but we already saw a dominating performance from JDG earlier today, based around Zo uh, you know, Yagao actually. And this is what I'm always afraid of when I look at uh, JDG. They're constantly changing. Their most consistent players is you know is Zoom. But very recently, you've been seeing just you know Yagao come up to form. I feel Imp like Yagao just back also, on the world, yeah. Yeah, Yagao on this patch as well feels like a buffed up Yagao as well because we've got that Zoe availability. We've got a lot of different champions now in the meta that do, I feel, suit JDG. And as we move into the draft, we'll see whether that is going to be reflected here with what's picked. Now, this is a really important time for Griffin because when we move to new patches, Griffin are honestly, they're hit or miss mm. when it comes to what they made of the changes after the patch. And we had weird times where Lucian funnels were taking over the brains of Griffin and they were losing games, even though they were dominating the league before then. It does 
look like they've done their homework when it comes to what JDG want to be doing and what honestly just happens way too much in the LPL, and that's Crocodiles. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Renekton ban, even though you know Zoom is going to be eyeing it. Sejuani is what empowers it. And so what I'm looking at here is it would have to be a Sejuani ban, but you let go what is... Uh, oh, a no, pretty no. good Yumi pick. Remember, you, you can't you can't ban okay. the Sejuani here. You can't ban the Sejuani because if it's picked up first, Aatrox is going to be picked up. We get Sejuani and Yumi for Griffin. Don't do it. That's suicide. It That's suicide. Teams have actually been really confident being able to play against the Aatrox when you have a Sejuani within your midst. I'm not happy with what's about to happen, my friend. I'm not happy at all. If it's not a cat and a pig locked in here, I'm I'm throwing off my headset, man. Like I, it it has to be the Yumi. And the Sejuani, it is the biggest no-brainer, but no, Akali's the Akali. Fine. And that's going to be the priority here, of course. Mid laners here in uh, in Korea have been really prioritizing that Akali. Remember, Olaf is still up and available, and Olaf and Yumi is still in an, a, a great deal. Olaf runs, you know, circles around the Sejuani, so I can understand that they're leaving it up and available. But the thing that's weird, though, is the fact that I, I, I think I, I do see your point, maybe mm -hmm. seeing the Sejuani as a last pickable champion, because the Olaf has been successful in the LPL. Yes. It's been woefully unsuccessful in the LCK, and honestly, just not prioritized. This makes sense, right? Picking up the, the Sejuani, but the huge priority on the Akali is a crazy one to me. Not wanting to allow that assassination potential in combination with the World Ender, could be potentially how they're looking at it. I think Griffin are forced to pick up the jungle to be able to back up the Akali early on. If they lock in an Ezreal early, I'm not a fan of this one. This is going to be surprising. I think they understand. Did you see what Viper did on the Ezreal uh, with the Yumi? Did you watch that game? Which one was this one again? He made Prey look like uh -oh. a rookie uh -oh. that didn't belong in the league. Okay. Uh, it was it was disgusting what Griffin did to KT that whole series, but especially in that game. My concern is mostly in the fact that now you're going to have the Olaf band against you, the early game bridge champions. I think that Griffin is accepting that and saying, well, you know, Yumi Nocturne is a pretty damn good duo. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is something that Tarzan goes back to, and recognizing that they're going up against a Sejuani and they can scale alongside with it, or at least get to the level six point and be able to, you know, fight to its strength there. So that's an interesting point to Griffin. I, I actually like it. Even though, you know, on initial point, initial thought, I would have liked to see Olaf just be able to yep. support the Akali early on in the or if it is in the mid lane. But we'll have to see what ends up happening here. Good bans already. Olaf taken away. Olaf going to be taken away. I have a feeling the Xin Zhao is probably yep. going to see the next ban. Of course, Should just be. focusing on the earliest power in the jungle. The pike is going to be banned. And, uh... Isn't this the anti-pike patch? Are we on the anti-pike patch? We are on the anti-pike patch. 9.13 is when he got hit by a baseball bat. Yeah, that's out of the park, my friend. Uh, I don't. I, I feel like it's the Silas treatment. Yeah. Although Silas was booted into the jungle. He is a great. Sti he's still a fine support. No wave clear available for him. Of course, can't be put on solo lanes unless you have, you know, a hit on your head. Uh, but. Surprising. Probably just a throwaway ban. Lumao isn't going to be the type to pick it up for himself. Well, the Xin Zhao, as we expected, is going to be the final ban is from JDG. Time? So some understandable stuff here. Potential Nocturne, Nocturne time. We'll see whether the drive Ooh. by Yumi could be a possibility there. But this is what we've been seeing a lot in Korea. Has been the Silas jungle. The solo queue has been lit up by this guy just uh, wreaking havoc. And what happened when he was removed from the mid lane was they stopped him from being able to kill creeps. Yes. Well, he can still kill monsters just fine, Raz. It's yep. all okay. For you people out there that wasn't able to see, oh, I got to give him the respect. I got to give him the respect here because he is a Blitzcrank type. He played that one going into the playoffs uh, uh, two splits ago. So got to give him time. We got 10 seconds. Got 10 seconds. I'm, going, I'm just going to give him the respect. Picking Loom out into the hands, the, the king of cheese is, I mean, sorry, picking the, the Blitzcrank into the hands is a dangerous thing, but oh, he's going to cycle with my off heart, my friend. Yeah. What do you mean? This isn't playing with you. I'm just no, getting exactly good. what you want. I the Brad to be locked in bottom side. Oh, man. Okay. Lou now Mao. we've got Meep Collection happening. Lumao will always have an answer to Enchanter supports. When it ever comes down to how are we going to reach the back line, you know, Yumi oh. being like, oh, my oh, God. God. Yes. <laughs> yes, my friend. <laughs> Please. All right. Well, that means that we've got Sword playing Akali. I maybe on the top side. Yes. And Shobi has hard locked the talent. This All right. is All a right. damn good game all right so there's there's taken a leap out of g2's book and there's taken a leap out of g2's book at rift rivals okay <laughs> they are very different things
<laughs> All right. Okay, the talent to be picked up. And this can this can really make an Azir's day a real bad one. Yeah! Like, let's just take a, a step back, because for the people out there that haven't been seeing the game for the earlier, you know, the first game of the day, SKT, yeah. Click picks up the Silas jungle. And remember, it was up against the same pick of the Sejuani. The Sejuani dude, yeah. He can go through his camps, go through his clear pretty easily. And so when it comes up to matching Sejuani, hell, not only do you match the clear, you match your damn ultimate. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, CV Max, you can see big grin on his face as we move into the final game of the night. Day one here, Rift Rivals 2019, and it couldn't be spicier as the talent has been picked in the mid lane. And no, that isn't Pawn. Normally when we see talent, we just assume mm -hmm. that it's Pawn, be it in the LPL in uh, days gone by or these days. Or if it's the Bard, you would assume, PYL, how'd he find himself in this <laughs> yeah, event? What's he doing here? <laughs> what what's happened? he doing here? But, but no, it's mm -hmm. Lumao. I mean, that is Imp's support. But maybe you just have to be Imp's support to pick up the bar. This is the rise of the players that haven't been able to hit that international stage. Yeah. Finally getting that chance, and they're not living it up. They're saying, yeah, throw at the champs that and make so us And so is the power. crowd. Here we are. Game number six of the night and the final one. Let's get into it. Yeah, this place just erupted. Where did they come from? Well, these are Griffin fans, my friend, and they have been coming out of the woodwork all year. If you've been watching a bit of LCK, these guys are pretty good at winning, mm -hmm. and especially in the last uh, little while. They've sort of put on uh, their spring pants once again, the early spring pants, and uh, those ones, the, the elasticity is still definitely there, you know? <laughs> definitely there. Oh, yeah. Many One many thing, whenever we talk else. about, you know, Ezreal and Yumi in the bottom side, we, there's always a horror story out there. It can excel and just be so really brutish to be able to deal with, of course. I'm you know, really... Yumi Q slow, going yeah. on to your point. Because, like, the Yumi Q slow set up for the Ezreal as well. A lot of that can be damning to deal with. The range advantage is certainly there. They're already having to deal with it. <laughs> so this is this is the thing. And I, I really want to treat you to this. Okay. Because we saw Ezreal Yumi picked up. And it was terrible from other teams. Yes, right? It just wasn't working. And then Viper and Lehens did it, and it looked, it looked like it was uncounterable. Because the setup is super important whenever it comes down to it. Because Ezreal and Yumi, if you are on the weak side, Ow. easy to dive. Because you lose control of the wave. I mean, you get shoved in. Dive potential is there, and Yumi, what can she do if she's getting like pressured under turret by three people? She can't even you know, push them back. She has no CC on top of that. But boom, Griffin set up with a talent. Early damage, shoving in Yagao, and he can constantly lean towards that side of the map. So Lumao's going to have to take that out. I don't give a damn you pick Bard. <laughs> whenever, whenever the uh, talent ends up shoving and roaming, you have to press back. Click on the, the left-hand side of the screen, yep. please, as much as you possibly can. Zoom versus Sword up here towards the top side. I'm actually really excited to see Sword on a more aggressive and more mechanics-based matchup because he's been playing Jace only yeah, it depends so on far your this season. It depends on your perspective because Akali is just a, is the no button whenever you throw down <laughs> Shroud. Yeah, that's if you're true. you're Aurelia, if you're an Aatrox, you're like, I guess I'm just or, for the Aatrox. I'm gonna mindless the Q in this tr here Shroud to see if I can get <laughs> damage upon you. you. Actually, it turns into fishing. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, so, like, all of a sudden, the, the pond gets really murky. This is difficult to even look for a gank post six, especially because you have trick and flip. Then you have your ultimate. So I think it's pretty damn safe, especially in team fights. Buys for a lot of time. Champions like Akali, Lissandra, that just they're very squishy, but at the same time can buy a lot of time in team fights. I call them like the filibuster champions, where yep. they just they're essentially playing the role of tanks, and it's incredibly frustrating for Imp in this case, who has the minimum range to deal with the back line, let alone the front line that's just constantly in front of your face. I love the team fight perspective from uh, Griffin in this one. I think their draft is really good. Well, actually, I think that if this was a team fight tactics composition from mm -hmm. Griffin, it would be a five stack Yumi. Oh, that's yes. what it is. They've stacked up their Yumi comp mm -hmm. really, really nicely because they've got Chovy. He can go invisible. Okay. That's Kitty Cat delivery system right there. Sword, also, you and me, pops on top of the Akali, and all of a sudden there's two people I can that can't that. be seen running around this rift. And even Tarzan, 
is able to come in from the jungle and throw out Flawless's ultimate with the final chapter over the top. There are a whole lot of different uh, availabilities here for Lehens to really dictate how this game is going to go. And this is the beauty of the Silas jungle because you're right, we talked about it being picked into the Zaguani, but it's very rare that you get an opportunity as a Silas to have an option on the Bard ultimate as well. Yeah. So engage well, yeah, is not... I didn't even not... think of the Tempered Fate availabilities. Yes. The engage is not an issue for Griffin. Within their composition, you look at it and you're like, it's kind of difficult Ooh, with Yumi. Cosmic Binding Lands. It's going to be fine. Meep Slap. Boom. Wasn't too bad. But, okay. Oh, Tarzan. As I He's looking get for him. him. There's the abscond. Chovy, he gets the first roam. Jumps over the wall. Get him. Jumps over the next wall. Does find himself the Q. The rate comes in and Flawless has to flash to get out of the way. That is the skirmish power of this duo from the mid and jungle out of Griffin. And they already have shove in their adjacent lanes. Mid being shoved in, bot as well. So even if Lumao, as you can see in the minimap, trying to rotate just in case it goes on for even longer, guess what happens? Like Ezreal and Yumi will shove you in bot side and look to consistently poke out an imp. So bot side strategy has been working out really wonderfully here from Griffin. So it's going to break those infernal chains. And he's going to keep himself safe here, top side of the map. 6 CS down at the moment as the Akali versus the Aatrox, and in the mid lane, in fact, a 10 CS lead for Yigao. It's Tarzan, he's found the magical journey and takes it alongside the Bard with the Flash, oh. the Cosmic Binding. The outplay from Lumao is so huge, but not quite enough. Fair bit of damage now from the Q, as Tarzan's able to lim limp away, but he ain't making that choice again in a hurry. Yeah, the sustain on that one was concerning, right? It was the heal, not just based off the summoner heal as well, but of course Yumi being able to top you back up. Tarzan should have died. Yeah. There is no way you make that follow and you come out alive if it's not for that insufferable sustain that Yumi has to offer. Well, now Griffin are going to be able to shove this one forward. Where they do have an advantage is, of course, on this bottom side of the map. And you can see they're trying to take the turret plates in order to get there. Clearing out this minion wave pretty comfortably. Siege minion is here, and that should be able to guarantee this plate. And uh, you can see Flawless, no opportunity to defend this in any way, shape, or form, especially not at level 5. Yeah, but at least the good thing for Flawless here is that he's able to get to his experience, being able to pick up Grudge. That's true. That's so true. he has that, or at least had, a one-level advantage over Tarzan, but the experience is there for him. If he gets the 6 first, then he can make the play bot side and just erase a lot of the pressure that's been going through. So that's the hope that JDG has. But the reality is the consistent pressure that Griffin is able to apply bot side just based off this, this man alone is what I'm really worried about. And a lot of times the, cons the, the worry for a talent is that he drops off, quote unquote, drops off as the game goes on. But this composition... Yeah, I mean, does he drop off against this comp? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, this comp is actually really well done at being able to just dive straight into the back line. Imp, realistically, should not survive in these larger fights if Akali and Talon are on your th uh, down your throat. So I really like, just based off of the idea, uh, uh, Griffin's composition. Well, Zoom, unfortunately, um, came up empty when it came to the fishing in that shroud, but Sword's still taking a fair bit of damage here, meaning that Zoom will have the priority up here. Teleport back from the Akali. You gotta put more uh, money in your bait. The bait is what gets the Akali out. Yeah, that's the thing. You, yep. know, you just gotta spend that extra money, not just use, like, worms that you've uh, you've found in your backyard, something like that. Sometimes you gotta spend that money. Is uh, Tarzan not gonna be taking the Crimson Bramble back here as Yigao is going to start hitting that one with his Sand Soldiers. But they can continue on with this pressure, which is why Red Buff is not being started back up. Take a look at how much damage Imp took in that lane, just because Lu Mao had to rotate here. So. And also gives now Griffin and Tarzan, especially okay. someone to do something down here is, okay, that's the True Shot Barrage. Not quite able to lock down the kill, but this what? is just 2v2. This is insane. Meanwhile, Flawless almost going to die. Now Lu Mao's still not out of trouble just yet, as it's Help getting me. converged on by Everyone, first blood still available as the abscond does not find the mark. Griffin come up short, but not that short as we've got a 700 gold lead and so many plates being taken on this map from these guys. They're robbing an Ikea right now. Mm, that was the worry. That was the entire play right there. Imp was taking too much damage on that one. And just the call, just the call from Lehens to just go straight for it. Lumal should have died throughout that entire play, of course, keeps just alive through it, but they get completely shoved out of bot side of the map. I didn't even have focus on what happened with Flawless, but obviously the talent yeah, was I following. Yeah, I didn't see him. that one either. He almost died, Rez. That's what we need to know.
And so this is the worry that we're having here. Great focus from uh, Tarzan just to work alongside Chovy to just dive straight into the red side jungle. Yep, great work from uh, Chovy here as well to stay relevant as far as CS is concerned. This lane is all about can you kill the minions before your Gao kills you? Yes. Basically, because uh, Talon is not necessarily going to be easily diving on top of the Azir shifting sands. He's going to be too strong there. And uh, therefore, this pick is not about the laning phase at all. It's about can he get out of the lane and destroy the rest of the map and then jump over everything in order to get back up to clear out minion waves as they come. And these open lanes are important. If, these, if this turret goes down, just regardless of the turret plating gold, yeah. then suddenly, who's going to take that extra wave in the bot side of the map? Is it going to be a Gao? Is it going to be Imp? If it's either, they end up losing to the talent that rotates that side of the map. Or even the Akali. Pick your poison. Uh, Griffin's comp works out well if they can play to the side to the sides of the lanes, you know, incredibly well. But to JDG's credit, the game hasn't even gotten to their to their strengths. Yeah. And uh, we came back. Uh, I'm not sure whether we dropped They're trying out to there, shut me up. Yeah, my my they ears. Don't want me my to ears tell died. JDG they didn't want what to see do. this. Azum is going to get dived on. Zord is going to be here, and they are going to grab it. That's Tarzan grabbing a killer instinct and using it for exactly that. Flawless was in the area. Yagao even forcing the teleport just in case it goes long enough, but not going to happen. Just being able to get the kill on the zoom as fast as they could, so great, great gank. I mean, uh, Yeah, it really nicely out. done. Griffin, though, they're going uh -oh. for the roam, and this is what can happen. Chovy's got his Moby boots now. True Shot Barrage will tag Imp, and Chovy says, that's my time to go in. Stop him. Yeah, can he dive forward? There's going to be the flash in. The ultimate's not quite enough damage, as Imp was able to have a nice hot cup of cocoa and get himself out of it. He just got straight on top of him with a flash, too. How are you going to be, as a bard, throwing the ultimate in the right direction? Yeah. Throwing your fuse. Of course he's going to miss that. The Talon just went straight for his back. Would so. you say that Tempted Fate was then Tempting Fate? Is yeah, that what yes. you meant? 100%. 100,000% on that. All right, Chovy back into the lane, and this is exactly what he's going to be doing. In and out, in and out. Just uh, making sure that your gal's not going to have time with his Sand Soul just to get those autos in. and. Flawless isn't going to be able to enact ganks like this as oh. effectively. Tarzan not in vision at the moment. As uh, there's the Empress Divide. Chovy delivered for free over to JDG, evening out that kill score very nicely. Tarzan not going to have the opportunity to go towards this Mountain Drake. The pesky guy is going to be chasing him. Oh no. As now Yagao has to deal with Tarzan. Yeah, I don't think he can get in max range. You have to be concerned if you're Gao on that one. Don't oh, play yeah. around. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Shifting Sand's gonna be out again to safety. He's all right, Raz. It's all fine. Right, okay, Still had okay, his okay. flash. Wasn't gonna die. But that was so that, okay. That was great from JDG to be able to look for that play. If they had waited any longer, you can already see the dragon being Teleport. started. But this is what you're worried about. Imp is actually deciding he wants to just straight up take this one. He knew that there were gonna be three people. Um. There's never an excuse for that. Even Goodbye. if it wasn't those champions, we already talked about the two that you have to be concerned about in side lanes. But I'm trying to have a look for the vision here. I don't know whether that control would actually went down as uh, Tarzan was moving through, because mm. if that's the case, Imp knew he was dead. Yeah. And he was just trying to kill uh, some minions Of here. course. I mean, the sin was taking that wave. Yeah. And that's what this game is going to be about. If he takes that wave, any of those champions can really find him. Uh, especially as... The lanes go longer, Akali can be free to the top side of the map, then that's the real worry here. Imp wants to be able to get to his core items. Uh, if he gets to his Rage Blade, perfect, right? But obviously just, that's going to be a tough I just want to let you know road. as well, Tell like, me. Imp, he hasn't been allowed to play League of Legends, and he just really wanted to have a little bit of time to play some League of Legends Yeah, I can see that. And uh, unfortunately, against this Ezreal Yumi lane, especially with the way that Griffin have been playing around bottom side so much, uh, it's, it's really, really hard. To now really this, give him that opportunity. This is the worst thing. This is the stranglehold now Griffin has put, like, what the composition is best for. Ezreal and Yumi mid, get a ton of poke and chase throughout, like, you know, 3v3 possible. And then having Talon consistently being able to match Imp if he's put in a good spot. And actually, we even throw in Sword. Look, pick your poison, as I said. Can, yeah. Imp cannot take either of those people. He has to be underneath this tower and have ultimate primed for the shield. Push up Barrage. Not gonna find anyone other than Zoom, and that means that Shelly will be going in advantage to JD Gaming. They'll have to use her very quickly if they want to get any crockery from it, but we'll see how fast Shelly's going to be making her approach to the rift. If you can see, I mean, I don't think you can go past the river here. 
A lot of the times, and he wants to place the Rift Herald. He's not going to be able to get the, you know, the turret platings. He only has 20 seconds left. But yeah. I'd say mid lane turret, uh, turret being taken down, especially up against uh, Griffin's composition, is the best. If you go through top lane, sure, it can set up for the mid lane turret, but you don't want necessarily the longer lanes. You want to be able to take down that mid lane turret so you have access to both sides of the jungle. So if you're going for the dragon that's going to be coming up in three minutes, then you can have the vision placed down, but who did they find? All right, yep, JD has found Trovi, and now he's dead. That's what happens if everyone presses all their buttons <laughs> on one character. That's what this composition can do. I mean, I just didn't expect it. Obviously, yeah. he did not. That's what, now you see it, now you don't. It's a bit of magician work over on JD's side. They're bringing Azir for this one. Uh, I don't know if they think that they can move into the second turret, but just in case Griffin thinks they can pick a fight. Well, Tarzan's got a tempered fate that he can now play around with. It's, it's, a, it's a weird ultimate in general mm -hmm. and a hijacked version. I don't understand. Like, what happens if you tempered fate a tempered fate? Oh, only good things happen, my friend. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> we'll I don't know. I feel Whatever. like if, if you go double golden, maybe you go... You go silver or diamond? Oh, of course. Just as he got into the bush. Uh, yeah. He thought he was going to have angle on him. Didn't see Lu Mao putting himself in position. And the power of vision is demonstrated for you pretty effectively right there as well. As uh, If you got a talent, you want to remain unseen for as long as possible. As a uh, sword down here on the bottom side, pretty comfortable now with Gunblade in hand. Yeah, but I would like to see, going back to the earlier point before we moved into the replay, yeah, yeah. Uh, JD pick up in the uh, outer turret mid. They need to start forcing Griffin to start worrying about vision control around the neutral objectives, that being uh, Dragons, eventually, five minutes off from now, Baron, with the Azir and uh, Kaisa. This game is far from over, regardless of oh, the... Oh, absolutely. You know. And so, I feel like, as well, like any sort of late-game team fight yes. is all about JDG. There is no way Griffin are going to win a team fight. They have to win on shenanigans. Yes. And they need to do it pretty effectively by the mid-game. At the moment, they have a gold lead, but it is not a gold lead that makes you feel comfortable. And because JDG have traded gold through, like Bard being able to find the Azir sec with Yagao to get the kill on mid lane was that first step. And then of course the Rift Herald being able to be picked up, fight preceding that, like JDG are in a good spot to still play around in later objectives. They just can't get picked up. Well, there's oh, the no. Tempered Fate on top of the gentleman who uses the Tempered Fate. True Shot Barrage follows him through the magical What, what, what the hell? He just went to the, to the moon and back on Tarzan's side. Gets himself the shield. He's going to be all right as Chovy jumps over the wall a little bit early. Jumps back again. It's absolutely fine. Final chapter now coming in as Griffin. They eventually find the kill, but I don't know. I mean, Tarzan took a trip to outer space, and I'll see whether he's actually going to let us know what happened. That was a magical journey. <laughs> if you ever had one. That was beautiful. Good lord. All right, well, now Zoom goes into the world. And Infernal Chains is going to land. I don't know whether he can actually make this one happen, though. Lumao, he's only back up for the moment. As Lahan Sword. The you and me is going to be there. Yeah, Sword wants to find it. First ultimate does come in. Does have the more of Malmordius to Zoom, though. It's going to be absolutely fine. Just gets the ultimate out of Sword there for free. But this is still pretty disappointing from Griffin, that they're putting in a lot of effort. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like they managed to get 2,000 gold out of that. Yeah, they did. They did. But just take a look at the beginning of this, because a great pick off of Lumao initially, right? <laughs> I just want to see it just for the week. I want slow-mo on this. Boom! <laughs> that Arctic Assault was about as much Arctic Assault as you could have. And so this is what you want to see out of Chovy being able to follow through, get the kill onto Flawless. But... You know, when I make these points, it's mostly because while the gold lead that like exists, just to see what happens here, nothing out of the replay. Yeah. Uh, remember, we're nearing that 20 minute mark, and we're getting to that point where the 3k gold lead, 3k gold lead isn't enough. Then. JDG will still be able to group up with the Azir, Kaisa, and uh, Bard, Sejuani, and still force these fights in their favor. So I'm looking for more out of it, at least before we get to that Baron mark. Well, two minutes until that one is there. Griffin still with a monopoly on these dragons. Now an ocean picked up alongside the mountain that they collected for themselves already. Tarzan eating some honey fruit and also just uh, destroying his way through the jungle. This is a man that we've uh, set a lot of accolades for and he's continuing that dominant performance here on the clip pick from earlier in the day in the Silas jungle. This is sneaky. Where are we going? Where they're going on a magical journey. Chovy's, Where that uh, is, I'm not entirely sure. It's Chovy, like you he say. He can take this fight. He's going up. on one as well. As uh, He's just going to dance over some walls. 
The ultimate actually comes in as it's going to be traded. Yep. He saw that animation come out, knew that he had to go invisible to avoid getting targeted. Knew that Kaiso was in the area, of course, would be able to join up pretty easily with the ultimate. So yep. just get the hell out of there on that one. If vision is available, that's of course what's going to happen. Viper and Lahens hanging out here in the mid lane and going to be an almost unpushable lane against these two. And so this is my concern. I know we had a brief discussion about the late game team fight and what it would look like. Front to back, sure, JDG has that. Yes. But by no means do Griffin, you talked about like the shenanigans, the creativity that Griffin could have in these fights. Like the poke that comes through from Ezreal is step one. Yeah. But also just the, the positioning, the vision control that Akali can have before she dives straight into the back line. That's why Imp has to have, you know, a calm demeanor about how these fights are, where he's leaning towards, always be right next to the Azir, just so the Azir ultimate is gonna help him in one way or another. Like, you have to concern yourself with the uh, the two assassins that'll dive straight towards you. And, uh, I mean, you mentioned Imp has to have a calm demeanor. Now, when I was a commentator of the LPL, uh -oh. he didn't have one. He did not. Raz. Has he found one? Has he, he found one yes. in our recent years? I've actually been so excited for the recent Imp this split. This oh, year. Yeah. This year, because spring playoffs, he just came out of his own shell. And it's not one of those situations where it's like, you know, the whole Uzi discussion where he gets all the pressure and is able to make those plays happen because he has the goal to begin with. No, he's actually able to create a lot of these leads alongside Lumao in 2v2s straight up. Yeah. Right. Just straight 2v2 fights. Or in the most recent game that we saw uh, going up against Invictus Gaming in the, in the in the regular season, they were actually like Imp himself in team fights was just so damn strong in how he was able to position. So, yeah, I'm excited for Imp. It's been a long time to be able to say that. Yeah, well, but I'm the excited too because I, I've I've been a believer in him for a very long time. I mean, I was an LGD fan, dude. You like, were, yeah. Come I'm on, sorry that's, about that. that's, uh, that's a really tough time uh, to be alive. 2015 was a rough year, uh, if you guys remember. But at the moment, I mean, Imp is 55 CS behind uh, this Ezreal and uh, just got hit by his True Shot Barrage. That's he wasn't rude. even the focus. Yeah. And he still gets hit. Yeah, that's a two-for-one special that you weren't even expecting. That's when the the clerk at the the convenience store says, no, you, that's actually two-for-one. And you're like, <laughs> oh, oh, I thanks for that. Let me just go back and get yeah. it. Yeah, happens to me all the time here in Korea. They just love their, their, their two-for-one deals. I just great. I can't get those deals. <laughs> Unless if I'm going online, you know. Oh, yeah, you can get them that way. Literally from JD. JD <laughs> is a wonderful delivery, uh, so I'll just put that out there. What the heck? Yep. You got sponsorships happening now, Raz? Come on, I hope Look, you I get gotta a premium I got to promote this. the LPL and China whenever I can. <laughs> yeah, promote their delivery services yeah. as well while we're here. We Soon as not well. here, they don't get the same uh, <laughs> deal. All right, all right. I, I don't know. Stop do, it! Do I have to promote Griffins? Like, uh, What are they? Well, they're mystical beasts. That's true. They got a Papa sponsorship. Yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. okay. Mystical beasts. Yeah, I don't know whether mystical beasts. Man, it's a Harry Potter. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've already men I mentioned that earlier. That's true. That's true. So I guess we've already done that. Congratulations. I don't think Harry Potter needs all that much help when it comes to being famous. As, uh, the reason why we're not talking about the game all that much is that it's slowed down. 3,000 gold is still the approximate lead here for Griffin, and as the game slows, the more pressure you'll be feeling if oh, you are okay. Griffin. Tempered Fate underneath the turret is going to mean that a dive is possible, but Flawless in great position, and Griffin are not going to pull the trigger. Arcane Shift gets Viper out of the way, and Zoom in the meantime is splitting on the bottom side. Sword's going to have to head back down there, and this is just pressure gained by JDG. Yeah, I think that he could have held on to the Bard ultimate a little bit longer. Good damage. Lu Mao is basically out of this one. Yeah. Because the dragon's going to be up, and that should be a double mountain dragon for Griffin. So, and what is a great composition to be able to look for pressure around Baron buff? I mean, if they get double mountain, they're like, uh, you know, singing. Yeah, that is a that is a two-man Baron possibility there. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess three-man. You're yeah, probably going to include Lehens there. Who's going to get those zoomies in for the heals and things like that. But it does then mean, like, this composition can execute a 1-3-1 with a Baron buff and rip through turrets extremely effectively. And that's exactly what they want to be doing. They want to be splitting JDG up. So this front-to-back teamfight composition that will be able to work so well in the late game is not actually going to be able to get that game plan working as Lumao oh, no. once again caught out, but does have a magical journey. Magical Journey hurt a little bit, but is going to be all right. But you can the tell end. the intent of JD here. They want any bit of vision so they can contest for this dragon. But, you know, Griffin's been on top of it. Been able to keep their control ward up and available. They don't have to expend too many people to take the dragon itself. All they need to have is, you know, pressure within both bot and mid lane. And there's nothing that JDD can necessarily do. So, uh, good positioning here. I don't know why JDD's position up topside. 
Viper misses the Q there onto Imp, but the Prowling Projectile, that's a tougher one to miss, given the fact that it gets that slow. Imp, though, able to move out of the way of these Mystic Shots, which is the big deal. Tarzan now picks himself up in Emperor's Divide. We'll have to keep our eye on which Sand Soldiers are whose in the next fight, potentially. You can already see it. They're basically just picking both sides to keep their vision clean. If the Observer would close, like, essentially close off the vision. <laughs> oh my god, please stop hitting him! <laughs> But yeah, both the right and left side of mid lane have been pretty well secured by Griffin. Oh, Griffin now is looking to secure themselves their third Drake as Tarzan. Got Gonna be him. able to throw out that ultimate. Goes golden to Zlumau and does buy some time here. Viper is eventually able to grab that kill. Is now Chovy. He has himself Lehens in his back pocket, making sure Imp can't enter this fight. Does have to be careful because Imp will have that killer instinct available. Can reposition quite well around CC opponents. Viper looking for Qs with that pesky mini wave in the wrong position. True Shot Barrage flies out, and in the meantime, Tarzan is going to be taking this Mountain Drake. Yep. Don't need anyone else really to help you out. They can secure the bit mid lane push so there's no response from JD. If yep. they hadn't sent more people to get the Dragon, JD would have looked for the uh, outer mid lane turret, but not going to be a possibility. That's a double Mountain Dragon now for Griffin. Double Mountain Drake, and now a 3,000 gold lead still. So they need to buy more. They How'd need this to get more. Oh, the Azir ultimate, please. Yep. This is what I love. You feel like you've taken a champion out of the game, and he still finds his uses. Tarzan has been playing through this one excellently. And he's been cycling so many different ults as well. Remember, if you hijack an ultimate, it's not the hijack cooldown that you have to worry about. It's the cooldown of the individual ultimate. Yes. Especially once you get higher ranks. So currently level 12 has rank 2 in that hijack. Level 16 is where you get to that hilarious territory with 8 second cooldown on hijack and multiple ultimates in a team fight. But uh, hasn't got to that point just yet. But JDG, they've got to the river around this Baron buff, and they have control vision everywhere. It's this that they have to be concerning themselves Ow. with, and it's not stopping, right? You don't have somebody on your midst, unless if it's flawless, who can walk up and really soak up that poke that Ezreal's throwing out. So that's the stage at which we are in in the game, is that mid lane, sure, you have the shove with Azir and Kaisa, but then you still have to deal with the Yumi and Ezreal pokes that follows up, and you get shoved back to lane. I just love this, though. I love looking at compositions that have so different game, like, mindsets on how to win the game. The win conditions are very different for both of these squads. Griffin now trying to play multiple lanes. They have pressure in mid. They have pressure on bot side with the minions. And the Talon had roamed up towards the top side. JDG, this is the vision of Griffin as Trophy's going to be discovered. You got to be careful of these glacial prisons. As Tarzan has a Tempered Fate once there again, that tower is not going to be doing anything. Neither is the Glacial Prison. Tarzan just slowed down a little bit, and that is such a big button now unable to be used by JDG. Yeah, that's the power, of course, of the Bard Ultimate being used. You can take down the turret and just essentially make it where it is just a raw, you know, four or four hour team fight until it comes right back up. And that is not what JDG wants this to be about. That's why they're just sticking to the turret. They may not have much vision. I mean, Griffin doesn't either, but they're leaning to the right side of the map where their wards are. So they don't have to, you know, be taken out by Yagao, who was initially in the top side of the map. So as the game currently stands, Griffin is just in a, in a stranglehold on JDG. And also, it's the first Flame Horizon of Rift Rivals 2019 is almost here. As uh, somehow, at 27 and a half minutes, Viper has 325 CS. And uh, Imp has 227. Oh no! So we're ticking up. We're ticking up. It's the battle. Imp's just trying to keep himself over the line. One CS is going to separate that Flame Horizon. Flame, of course, here and played. That's true. We didn't, one, we which didn't is, think uh, that would happen. It's really important. I wanted Flame to get a Flame Horizon today, but didn't happen. He was playing Karma oh. and was uh, just 30 CS. I don't ahead, think they're going to get what the they game. want here. Well, I think that Chovy also hasn't got what he wants so far this game. Yes. I feel like the. I understood what the talent pick was supposed to do, but it was supposed to do a lot of it before this point of the game and hasn't managed to. I think that's why it feels so competitive between these two teams, even if Griffin have had so much tempo and control mm. throughout uh, throughout this mid game and uh, even in the early game as well. Well, fair. I mean, that passive threat that we were referring to on side lanes definitely made that CS advantage be what it is in the UAD carry, right? Yeah, Imp, that's a good point. Imp can't really accrue any bit of CS on this, unless if he's mid lane. But with how long the Siege has been going through mid, 
Imp has actually just been getting leeched in experience and in waves because Yagao has to be there alongside like Flawless and uh, and that's where the issue is starting to lie. Well, there's another one. Tempered Fate just seems to be uh, Tarzan's favorite ultimate. So it's not going to be an AP build here from Ezreal, which is uh, what I thought. I mean, he's been going, getting a lot of damage off of his ultimate, but he's not going to be going towards the Gunblade. Uh, Actually, I really like Zacco. this. I really like this. Tarzan's going to be doing a lot of magic damage, so is Sword, and even Lahans. Yep. So you're just mixing up the type of damage you're going to be doing, especially when it's Viper and Lahans mm -hmm. on top of one another. Making so sure that physical damage is going to be there, so the mix is going to allow for difficult itemization. Griffin denying vision, but Lumao does have the ability to get over here and actually clear out these wards. And that's what's going to get difficult for JDG as this game goes on. Because there are about a billion assassins on this map right now. Mm -hmm. And almost anyone can single round of spells and take down Lumao. So he does have to be really careful and does have to make sure that his finger is on the magical journey trigger. This top lane turret should go down. Uh, Griffin should be able to t pick it up. It depends on how long they end up committing to it. Uh, but at the moment in time, if they're able to take top lane turret, there it goes. They can move for a, a, a flank through mid lane. Imp is already getting pummeled. I'm so gonna, I'm gonna a flank have to position request is great. some stats here, like the amount of uh, true shot barrages that have just hit him. Be it like across map or in the lane that Viper is actually in. Ball, as you can see, looking for another glacial got prison. Him. Yeah, the abduct, the abscond, both going to work out here against Zoom. He's got a GA got though. Him. He ain't going down anytime soon. Tempered Fate is going to be avoided here by JDG. Right in the middle is where Tarzan got that one. Very realistically, this game can just stay at two and four because all Griffin is trying to do is get necessary pokes so they can get another dragon under their belt. It's another mountain drake as well. The perfect dragon for this composition, you have to feel his sword. Oh, we're gonna in. dive into the back line. The exhaust is gonna be their final chapter. He's gonna soften up the members of JDG so much. No one has fallen just Toby. yet. Toby launches into the back line and it just gets evaporated. Takes the easy way out there as well as now. Zoom trying to get work done. Loom out dies as an afterthought. The GA is there, but I'm sorry, mate. That is a see your death moment. And now Griffin should be able to run to the Baron. Straight through the flank. Toby unseen just eviscerates him and then just dives over the wall to get out of there That's the ninja assassination from all the movies man. This is exactly what Hollywood was made of <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, well Griffin are gonna be able to turn that into even more of a horror story It feels like the original it movie, you know where the the clown all of a sudden turns into that really big scary weird looking monster oh, no. Well, that's what the Baron buff is and he gets dealt with very easily. I mean, I felt like that wasn't the scary part of the movie, let's be real. Kind of uh, ruined everything. Tim Curry's performance was really the, that was the highlight in the scariness. We've gone off track, but Griffin do have themselves a Baron, and this is part of their win condition. Six and a half K gold is going to be the lead, but it's not about the gold, it's about what they do with this three minutes of Baron they have right now. What we saw in the last fight is something that now with Baron buff being enabled, is this going to happen again? Right, that mid lane inner turret may be your friend, but it's gonna hit you. All eyes on the minimap. Take a look at Talon's path. Knew how long this fight was going to go, and that was the whole point of Sword starting this fight out. Knew that Chobi would be able to come in. Bye. And this is what nightmares are made of. <laughs> Help me! God. I believe he missed the rake as well, and then just went, boy. Yeah, now we're back to the action. I, I honestly, that's what the entire idea was. Even yeah. if Akali was in the bot side of the map and it was Talon starting out that fight, they can stall them long enough for Akali to do the exact same thing to him. And so that's the issue, not only for the longest portion of this game, denying you from those bot lane mi minions, but also denying you from a real front line. What is your front line going to be able to achieve you? Flawless has really felt invisible this game, not because he's not... Oh, well, maybe. Well, we've discovered him now, but that's an instant QSS. Well, Mercurial Scimitar, because of course Viper has all the money in the world. Prowling projectile comes forward, and I that ultimate hit, by the way, guys. Yes, <laughs> like, it hit. <laughs> and Captain Jack is in the build. I think he is. In fact, he is. He He's is. an analyst. Exactly. He's working right now as uh, Griffin are going to be able to take down this inner turret. But that Bottom backs... side of the map, the Aatrox is defending well as Chovy has left that lane. But that backs my point about how Flawless seems, you know, invisible, but he's trying a lot. Yeah. He's trying to make plays happen, but the Mercurial Scimitar on the Ezreal, who's been forcing everything down your throat, and then you look towards what's ha been happening uh, consistently, he's playing a front line. It's that 
The front line, uh, the, the, the damage is changing. The talent is constantly finding your back line, and so Imp has no security this game. Yeah, and he's against an Akali and a Talon. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just having a really bad time at that point. If you can make a TFT reference, I feel like they've just, uh, they've gone for different late game compositions, and one of them has really made things a really bad time for that Draven standing in the back line of one yeah. of the comps. We got, could potentially transition, you know, put some items onto your Gao on this Azir, who's more difficult to assassinate. He has himself the uh, Zonya's Hourglass now, and could be a way for JDG to make that big play to get into this game but the problem is, is that Tarzan's he's a legitimate carry right now he's got he's 104 got his dash cannon got his timepiece and Yigao getting over this wall I mean the sand soldier's not so great against these barren up minions but what is good against them sorry what is good about them is taking down these turrets and Viper going to help out there as well Void Seeker not going to find anything and Flawless He's just relegated to watching his camps get taken by Griffin. This is going to be a really valuable base here. Not only are they looking for their control wars, but the amount of gold that they were able to get off this one run uh, was pretty yeah. annoying. <laughs> pretty big uh, power play coming out of, uh, of Griffin this time around. Two and a half minutes and the next Baron is going to be available. And I think that Griffin may need that to keep pushing forward. Without the Baron buff, JDG do have a lot of wave clear availability with um, mostly Yagao and the Azir. And if we were to make the assumption, of course, at the end of the barring like a miracle run, Griffin being able to take this game and there is an MVP, who would you pick up for this one? Who would I pick up for this one? Yeah. Whoop. Well, that's hard, right? Because you look at the money, and when you've got Viper at, like, Flame Horizon status, 130 CS ahead of his opponent, 7,000 gold ahead just by himself, I don't even know whether he's necessarily the MVP because of how the game has been shaped yes. around him being in this position. This so just... I understand why you asked that question. Mm. It's a toughie. It's a very tough one. This is where everyone has a stake in the MVP because, I yeah. mean, or, or overall, this I mean, remember, Chovy's incredible. in this game. So if I were to give it to anybody, get it. mostly through the structure, I would give it to Tarzan. Just based off how this game has gone. And I guess we're going to find another kill. Yeah. Tarzan oh, my God. Well. She misses another ultimate horrendously, but it doesn't matter. Another GA and potentially another death as the final chapter is looking for that route. Does not get it as you and me is going to get the little Yumi to safety. Unable to lock down that kill, but they do get a flash and a GA. And that might be Griffin's opportunity to go for this Baron that's going to be available in a minute. So, of course, not going to be going for it now. Yeah, now I saw them walk into the Baron pit. I'm like, yeah, they must be taken, right? 100%. But no. But the GA being taken on Zoom actually has such a large impact now. So, that's what I want to be able to see here is how you can start stripping down the front line. Of course, stopwatch being both available for Flawless and Zoom. Like, I want to be able to see how the, that's used within the fight. But Imp is getting dangerously close to the Rabbit on his death cap. And so, JDG still has a composition rolling. And it, all it takes is one mistake from, say, a Talon or Ezreal getting picked off right from the get-go. That is still very much possible, but based how cleanly this game is being done, uh, yeah, Griffin's on a roll. They certainly are. And uh, we do need to uh, direct your attention to the fact that we've now got both of the uh, super buffs coming up at the same time. Elder Drake is going to be spawning very early as Voidseeker, not going to find Tarzan. And uh, JDG iron oh. position around the Baron, oh. but Zoom does not have a health bar anymore. And look at that, da what's that burn damage? Someone is stuck. And it seems like Talon has to find a way out. Was that just, that wasn't just red buff, right? As Chovy is top side of the map. Ults gets himself out, jumps over that wall. Griffin are gonna be safe. Edge of Night was utilized as Griffin. Looking at this Baron pit, I believe their best option would be to go straight to the Elder and then go and just insta-kill the Baron. I have a feeling with uh, Elder and Triple Mountain, You'd probably three-shot it. Best call here from Griffin is to just deny the Elder Dragon take at this point. They have a good positioning of the map. They should push through mid. And to be fair, if they push through mid here, they can go for Elder. Uh -huh. uh, so that's a play that they can go. But I would say, okay. Tempid Fate. Find some Siege minions. As okay, Yagao was looking for it. Holds onto his ult button as Tempid Fate is going to go wide, mostly because Viper pressed the Mercurial Scimitar button to get that extra movement speed. Means that that button not going to be available. Extra movement speed from Yumi too. This is just insufferable to deal with. Yeah, the Zoomies and the Mercurial Scimitar yeah. movement speed, that's uh, 
That's nutty. Okay, Griffin are gonna go for it. That oh one's going God. to land the final chapter. Misses the last few bolts. Lumao trying to get out of there, Sword says absolutely not. Chovy gets a solo ultimate for his trouble. On the backside as Tarzan eventually takes down Imp and Griffin. By hook or by crook, are gonna win this fight. The first two going over to Tarzan. Sword looking for the back line is now flawless. Oh. Running away with a sliver of health. Chovy dives in with the Q. The Sun Turret is Wait there. A trying to get work down, it does. As the Yumi is going to fall, but eventually, so does that Sun Turret. Griffin have won the fight. Yeah, and their carries are still up. So they're taking a lot here. This should be an inhibitor. But 20 second long death timer on him. 47 second death timer on Yagao. Yeah, this is actually pretty late into the game. 40 minutes have gone by, Raz, somehow. Oh, no. And only now is it a 10,000 gold, le gold lead. And only now does Flawless have to desperately hold on to his Nexus turrets. The Talon will complete the ace. And look at the damage to these structures. Imp. Viper, with the Trinity Force he just built, is going to take down Imp and then will destroy the Nexus Griffin will reign supreme here in their first international game on the Rift Rivals stage. Beautiful debut. I mean, honestly, they strangled, strangled them to death. Griffin but in a weird way, right? Yes. Like this, like a talent composition isn't the one that you expect is going to, to play that sort of controlled mid game and then win team fights at 40 minutes as 5v5. They played that composition as if they had mastered it. And that's what is very scary to really, you know, yep. look into a mirror and say that, you know, JDG came into this game thinking that they had something up their sleeves, but the Bard being thrown in, thinking that it was just a typical Yumi Ezreal bot lane that they can just dive through. You roll a dice, I wouldn't even say, I'm gonna give him the, the full uh, credit. Yeah. You throw the blade at them. <laughs> the Talon comes through alongside the Akali and a lot of the naysayers, everyone that says, you know, about Sora's champion pool or what he can accomplish, throw him the safe Akali. Give the Talon to Chovy. And they really dictated the flow of the mid game. I felt like Griffin played as one unit pincering through uh, JDG this game. The thing I really loved about it was the fact that you look at Chovy a lot of the time in a... Uh in their victories and he plays flashy. He often wins his lane yes. and often dominates. This game wasn't about Chovy winning lane. This is about Chovy making the, the right roams to try and get flashes and get pressure on the bottom side of the map. Yes. He was honestly getting obliterated in the mid lane. He'd turn up, Sand Soldiers would be all over him. He'd be ha having a horrible time. Lost a couple of turret plates and Yugao actually played very, very well in that lane. But Chovy did his job. Yes. And then in that first team fight, he assassinates him. That's exactly what he has to do in that 5v5 scenario. And they come out on top. And I love that you say that it's terrifying that Griffin showed mastery on this comp because this comp's super weird, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot new about this composition with the Silas being introduced as a jungler and of course the talent coming through. How little we've seen it. But just take a look at the team fight that happened so consistently because Basically, the idea of Griffin's uh, composition was that they bled them. Uh, Kaisa wasn't able to find real waves in comparison to Ezreal, who was getting consistent experience advantage, CS advantage through mid lane, while Kaisa was sharing all of the above. Yeah. And so, like, that was a constant. And it was forcing JDG to make a call. And every time they were trying for a play through Sejuani going through mid, obviously Ezreal had the extra bit of safeness with the Mercurial Scimitar, you, like the Zoomies, all of the above that was working well in her favor. And also had the Kleptomancy and had about a bajillion gold. A lot of gold. Yeah, I think he had bought about seven items that game, having sold his uh, Ice Spawn Gauntlet uh, for the uh, Trinity Force in the late game. So incredibly impressive stuff out of Viper. But we're expecting that. That's exactly what this comp does. It plays around the Ezreal with the Yumi, mm -hmm. makes him into a super champion. And uh, Viper is very, very good at piloting that. We mentioned that before this game even started. That is why when the Ezra Yumi gets picked by Griffin, I get scared. By yep. anyone else, I wonder why it wasn't a different champion. To be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. they change my perception of the lane. Yeah. Because, and it's silly. Because they understood 
who the star of that composition was going to be. You're right about the whole, you yep. know, Talon being the primary focus of JDG. JDG went to us that lane, shut down Talon a few times. But the Talon recognized, okay, I don't give a damn if I'm losing waves off this Rome, and I don't care if I lose my life here because <laughs> while I'm at a deficit of my own lane, guess who has the most massive advantage and I can continue to play for? Of course, it's Ezreal and Yumi. Yeah. So I love that focus, the fact that they recognize they can go back and play as defensively, defensively with the lead that they had. And whenever JDG looked to punch, Look for a play off of the Sejuani ultimate, <laughs> Azir ultimate. Yeah! 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 How much damage? K damage. That's, a, that's a bit of damage. A bit that's of damage. a bit of damage. In the end, it was about a 12,000 gold lead, 40 minutes, so it was a long one. But so, look at that, it's just all red, you know, and it's all a Griffin gold lead, and they just slowly but surely, like you say, suffocated the enemy with a comp made out of assassins. Imp was out of this game. He had 10k damage dealt, Yumi had 13. Yeah. The reason why I want to point that out is simply, it's not its not a flame, it's nothing there. What is he gonna do, right? The range advantage was far too great in that scenario. Yeah. And there was never an opening in which, you know, JDG could pick up a team fight, right? There was nothing that he could do to get rolling and that was really the, uh, you know, the lesson of the day. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for this one simply because it feels like Griffin went to an international event and killed it with their first showing. It was so cool. And it was with a with a composition that looked like they were having fun. We are going to hear from Tarzan about that one, though. So here's Jason with uh, some help from Brian. All right. It's the final game of day one. Uh, we'll talk with uh, Griffin's Tarzan, who took the game six versus JDG. All right. So LCK ended up on the first day with um, first place. How do you feel? No, we are relieved that we took the dub. No, to be honest, uh, my performance wasn't that great. So I'm not too happy about it. Therefore, uh, as long as I play well, then our team will be just fine. No, this is uh, one of the moments that you've been waiting for. How do you feel about uh, facing versus other non-Korean teams? No, I've been nervous. I think I'm just going to use that uh, nervousness into my uh, skill set. No, you delineated Silas uh, as jungler. Was this a flexible pick or was this uh, predetermined in advance? No, there were some um, picks that were determined earlier. However, um, we kind of mixed it up. No, you had a very uh, hard time in the beginning, uh, especially on some of the lanes, especially Talon, and you were able to um, help help him out. Um, what was it like uh, team-wise? during that situation. You know, um, Talon's growth uh, kind of halted for a while. However, the bot lane played really well, so I think the game went pretty smoothly. No, now you'll be facing versus uh, Dashing Buffalo tomorrow. Uh, how do you feel about it? And please tell us your uh, expectation and approach. No, I think uh, we were sub-optimal today, so we're going to um, prepare even harder and uh, take another dub tomorrow. All right, that will be it for the interview. Thank you so much, Brian, for the translation there, and thank you to Jisun for the interview with Tarzan. Absolutely fantastic play on day number one for the LCK, but certainly showed some things. Raz, how are you feeling as the LPL representative here for your chances moving forward? Not good. No, but uh, <laughs> honestly, we had day one. Day one, you don't give it to them. I think that FPX learned a valuable lesson, and that's a really good match that we got a pleasure of watching. And then, of course, the second lesson is Griffin's still amazing as a team, being able to take it. Well, that's going to be it for day number one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for day two. Or actually, I jumped the gun just a little bit. Jumped the gun just a little bit. you calling me a liar? Yeah, I am calling you a liar. We're going to have uh, some highlights first. As uh, this was a pretty explosive day one, to be honest. And uh, for me, that match, JDG versus, uh, of course, uh, this had some of the big Griffin. ones in it, didn't it? This had a lot of great moments. And really, the specialty of Lu Mao's bard was overshadowed by his own ultimate being used against him. I love this <laughs> moment. I love this moment. Yeah, the, to the moon and back from yeah. Tarzan. The Savage God is what we like to call it. And Griffin kept dipping into the blue side jungle and red side jungle whenever, you know, Vision was trying to be cleared, specifically by Lu Mao. Every time he reared his head to clear out Vision, he was the victim to the attack. And so, of course, what are you going to do in this composition if you're Sejuani? You can't really look for a fight off this one. Teleport to 
be a response, so of course a zoom, so it felt bad. And yeah, was, is this really just a death highlight from Lumao? Is this what it's turning into? But here comes the tower. And remember, Sword, like he was an Orn player. He just initiated a team fight on Akali. That's a new one. That's true. We've seen it a few times before, but that was a pretty forced fight. That true shot barrage across four people was uh, a way to win a team fight as well, Ress. And that's the beauty of what you can accomplish without necessarily having all of the CC and all of it's available. Of course, this is their communication. Let's listen in a little bit. Oh. You don't have to say too much. No, this is this is Griffin Cox, my friend. This is the hive mind that is the Griffin. That's just the level of focus that the team has at this stage of the game. And that's how Secret Max actually trains this team as well. They train them not to be too wordy in the comp. They, he trains them to know what the right choice is to oh, make yeah. without having to tell each other what it is yeah. because the whole team already knows. Yeah, and execution whenever it comes to these larger fights is so important. So focusing on your champion, recognizing that the players alongside you are going to make the right decisions. You don't yeah. have to be micromanaging them necessarily. So great fights overall from Griffin. We saw consistent. Also, just patient performance. Much, much more patience than I am. I'm not a patient <laughs> person, apparently. You had no patience <laughs> at all. You just wanted to find out about that Infernal Drake, and we then you got to. what you wanted, and then you stopped caring completely. <laughs> Look, from that point forward, we got a lot of mountain dragons, and I was okay with that, too. Yeah. Well, I thought it was uh, a very good day, Rez. I had an absolutely fantastic time here today. And if you remember back to last year, this time about a year ago, I was sweating a little bit, Rez. Mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I was in a rough, a rough position because uh, our LCK boys were just not doing so well. Uh-oh. This time, day one, King Zone. Fantastic. King Zone's who I'm worried about. <laughs> King Zone as a team shouldn't be at this level right now, being able to take our <laughs> undefeated FBX. So, look, I'm going to say you guys have that one. Whatever uh, Warhorse did with that draft, you better run back on. Uh-huh. Well, we're going to have a look at the recap for today, of course, starting off with SKT's victory, Darmon following it up as well, and unfortunately, the LMS and the VCS not exactly having a great day as JD were also able to take down Dashing Buffalo. And as you just saw, the rise of the LCK as FPX gets taken by King Zone, and we finish off the day with JD falling to Griffin, and that means that we have this 4-0 for the we LCK. Still Still haven't seen Invictus Gaming play, of course. We'll come Let out with two of their moment. games. I'm right. just putting that out there. <laughs> all right, Homecoming all right. of Rookie, that's going to be a fun one to be able to watch. Haven't seen the five starting players of Invictus Gaming since MSI. Yeah. You know, those players have been in and out. Battleland didn't play for the first few weeks on that one. And so that's something to look forward to. Of course, Mad Team being the other team that we haven't seen today. Yep. And also, this is what you have to look forward to as well in day two. Mad Team versus King Zone first up. We'll uh, have our first look at Invictus Gaming over on the Chinese side, like you were talking about. And uh, of course, Top Esports out against Darmon Gaming there as well. We have seen all of our, chi our uh, Korean teams so far. So just going to be introducing Mad Team and Invictus Gaming for tom tomorrow's matches. But it's going to be fun because what I would assume to be the final day of the group stage. We want to see SKT go up against Invictus Gaming. And that's Gaming. why it's the last one. You have to spend all the time here, and then you get the, the treat at the end. That's mm -hmm. why you serve dessert at the end. Yeah, right? you get introduced that's to the team the to begin one. with, and then we get to see the main dish. So yeah. especially with how well SKT are performing, taking down flash rolls in the fashion that they did. I'm also really excited for Damon versus Top Esports. Yes! After, after 369's interview was really cute, of course, named himself Top Nog. Uh, just to, just because he's such a huge yes. fan and has been watching his stream for so long. Nogri, of course, he streams regularly, and you can see how superhuman his mechanics are. It's actually scary. The guy plays like a robot. I don't think he looks at his mini-map, but he does look at his opponent, and often he makes sure he's not able to look at his opponent. Whenever it comes to a champion that I don't want, ever want to see come back into the meta, it's Vladimir, and it's because of Nogri. <laughs> he's, he's still in the meta, my dude. I know, but... yeah. Not that much. <laughs> Not that much. So, like, ultimately, those are the amazing matchups we want to be able to see going yeah. into tomorrow. And I felt like a lot of these teams, especially the LCK and LPL teams, came out just as well as we last saw them. It feels like JD Gaming, while they traded one for one, they looked incredibly competitive. They did, but that's going to be it for day one, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow for day two.